the member from Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Speaker. The blaze started in a small brick, bun brick bungalow in Toronto at 3.45 p.m. Daryl was at home at the time of the fire. He lived with his parents, a retired father, and his mother, who operated a small home-based business, as well as caring for her son. Daryl, 54, had multiple sclerosis and was confined to a wheelchair. His elderly father and a nephew attempted to save Daryl, but were driven back by the smoke. They were taken to hospital with serious smoke inhalation injuries. Daryl was pronounced dead at the scene. A working smoke alarm was recovered in the house outside the bedroom where the fire started. Mr. Speaker, I present to the House Bill 72, the Residential Fire Sprinkler Systems Act 2008. It would be more appropriately named for individuals like Daryl and the hundreds of other Ontarians who might have been saved if a residential sprinkler system was present. In the galleries today, there are members of fire services from across Ontario who've travelled here today to bear witness to our actions. They can all tell you the harrowing stories of people who died or who was injured that might have had a chance if they'd had the extra precious minutes that a residential fire sprinkler system would have provided. I want to acknowledge their attendance and thank them for their ongoing dedication. Since being elected in 2003, I brought forward two private members' bills that would have ultimately put the onus for mandating residential sprinklers on the shoulders of the province. After consulting fire professionals, I've decided this time to approach the issue from a different perspective. The bill we're talking about today would amend several provincial statutes granting municipalities the ability to enact bylaws requiring fire sprinkler systems in all new residential buildings. This bill recognizes that municipalities should have the ability to ensure new homes in their communities have this important life-saving feature incorporated during construction. This past weekend, a family in my community of Brampton lost their home in a new subdivision and two firefighters were taken to hospital. I believe that sprinklers would have limited the spread of the fire that engulfed one home and left two others severely damaged. Every few days, we read stories about another preventable fire and the needless loss of life. These stories raise awareness, and it's clear the issue of residential sprinklers has finally become a provincial debate. On the one side are those charged with public safety. Minis municipalities and their fire chiefs from across Ontario have petitioned our government asking for the power to ensure that residential sprinklers are installed in all new residential construction. On the other side of the debate are home builders and members of the construction industry who claim new homes are safer and fire resistant. It's true. Building practices have improved, but today homes are built from lightweight composite wood frames that are consumed by fire more quickly and fail even faster than solid wood beams. Caught in the middle of this debate are politicians. For me, the choice is clear. I'm passionate about saving lives, and I know there's more that our province can do. I no longer wa wonder if building codes will be changed to require residential sprinklers. I just wonder when regulations will be brought forward. It's clearly the way of the future as witnessed by cities such as Vancouver. Interior finishes such as upholstery, laminates and contents made of synthetic foam and plastics are routinely found in our homes. Our sofas and carpets are now largely constructed from petrochemically based materials. These contents create fires that burn hotter, quicker, and produce higher concentrations of toxic smoke than natural finishes. A new study released in October 2007 by the Underwriters Laboratories adds credibility to the characterization of polyurethane foams and similar materials as solid gasoline. The furnishings that surround us today pose a higher level of risk than in the past, resulting in faster developing fires and less time to escape. As a result of this and other factors, the time between the start of a free-burning fire and a flashover has been reduced to between 2.2 and 4.3 minutes. Homeowners have a shorter period of time to escape, and firefighters have a much more serious situation upon arrival. Some have argued that only smoke alarms are necessary, yet while our first thought upon hearing a smoke alarm should be to get out, this is not always the case. People wait for reinforcing cues. What we typically do when we hear a fire alarm sounding is get out of bed, open the door, stick out our head, and wait 
for a cue or a direction, all of which, which takes precious time. In a review of fatal fire data over a three-year period in Ontario, it was found that 43% of smoke alarms did not work, usually because of a dead or missing battery or power source. 43. Smoke alarms aren't foolproof. They have a limited lifespan and need to be replaced every 10 years. Residential sprinklers are an automatic device, a technology that requires no human intervention or reaction. It's a proven technology, like airbags. It doesn't rely on changing human behavior to prevent an accident or a loss of life. Others have questioned the need for sprinklers. They've argued that the cost will negatively affect home affordability and may cost jobs in the housing sector. Yes, there's a cost associated with the installation of residential sprinklers. There's a cost factor with seat belts and airbags in motor vehicles. Today, these uh, devices are recognized as essential life-saving equipment that no one would be without. Vancouver, which has had residential sprinkler legislation for nearly two decades, has not seen housing sales negatively impacted. Every day, we spend nearly two-thirds of our day in a sprinkler environment, and no one's made the argument that we shouldn't have sprinklers in public places because of cost. Fire sprinkler systems have proven their value and effectiveness time and time again. They protect our workplaces, restaurants, entertainment venues, schools, factories, gyms, and places of worship. Vancouver has had 18 years of experience with residential sprinklers, and since the city passed the bylaw, there's not been a single accidental fire death in a home equipped with sprinklers. The Association of Municipalities of Ontario recently expressed support for building code revisions that would make sprinklers mandatory in new residential buildings over three stories and have also expressed support for this proposed bill. The Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs, the Canadian Council of Fire Marshals and Fire Commissioners all support the need for fire sprinklers in all residential occupancies. Organizations such as the Ontario Municipal Fire Prevention Officers Association and over 50 municipalities across Ontario support this legislation. On a cold February morning at 4 a.m., a fire engulfed a family home in Toronto. Loretta managed to escape the blaze with her two-year-old daughter and was pounding on neighbors' doors, pleading desperately for help. Her husband and four-year-old twin son and daughter were trapped inside the inferno. Neighbors reported that this young mother was frantic. She was screaming for her family members in the house. A neighbor went into the house and he said, I've never seen anything burn like that. There was just nothing I could do. Smoke and flames were coming out. It was engulfed. Toronto Fire dispatched 13 vehicles with 50 firefighters. The fire was under control at 422. Paramedics pronounced Stewart, Mackenzie and Arthur Cameron dead at the scene. This past weekend, I joined Toronto Fire Services and the Toronto Professional Firefighters Association at a service to honour past, present and future firefighters who make the supreme sacrifice at the Fallen Firefighters Memorial to mark the addition of 22 names to that monument. These brave men and women put their lives on the line protecting us. I don't want to see any more families devastated by the premature loss of their loved ones. I want to thank the Premier for acknowledging our province can do more to fire safety with regards to fire safety in residential buildings over three stories. I want us to be courageous and take that next critical step and develop a comprehensive residential sprinkler strategy for new construction. For more than 25 years, nearly a dozen coroners, juries and inquests have recommended changes to the Ontario Building Code to include residential fire sprinklers. Isn't it time Canada's most populous province took the lead on this issue and answered the call of saving lives? When I first came to Queen's Park, I remember something the Premier said. He encouraged us to be courageous and to bring legislation forward that's meaningful. I took his words to heart. I cannot think of anything more important than demonstrating our commitment to, to civilian and firefighter safety. And I'd like to thank my friend, Brian Maltby. He's been relentless in his determination to see residential sprinklers become mandatory. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.